Good morning. We are in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may know what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. If this is not an example about who we are to be with God, Jesus, then we had better say this to ourselves. There's no possibility we are ever going to get home into heaven with God, Jesus, alone with him in heaven, as him being pure living God, Savior, and Creator alone, but first, infinite God, all alone. And then he created us, all of his children, from the beginning of time, after he created the earth, in only six days, and on the seventh day, it says in the Bible, in the Old Testament, he rested on the seventh. I'm not sure exactly what each and every one of us are really expecting from God, Jesus, to be with us all alone in our life, and God, Jehovah, and the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, as one living God alone, infinitely first, and then our living God alone, for us to worship Him and savor the part in our life that He is with us right now on this world. We have to know that when He leaves this world for good, it's forever. Forever, for people who are left behind after God, Jesus' return, He will never, ever be back in this world ever again through the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, who is with us all right now. That means each and every one of us has the opportunity right now, today, this very second, in your life, whether or not you are watching this YouTube video or another sermon or hearing another person talk about God, Jesus, we all have an opportunity to say, yes, I truly believe in my heart there is a living God worth the understanding in my mind and my heart at the same time to put those two both together and help me to understand more about God's word and the living truth about who he is as Jesus Christ, the Lord living God himself, who was God himself in the flesh and who died on the cross for the world's sins. If you're not conformed to this world any longer, then there's no sense in listening to anyone else around you about something that is just simply pure garbage when they start telling you something outside of the word of God. I don't listen to anyone for very long once they start talking to me about their truth and their faith in a religion. It's not religion that saves us. It's faith in Jesus Christ, our God, Savior, and Creator alone. It's not works to save us. It's our only faith that we have in God, Jesus, our Christ, God, Savior, and Redeemer alone. If I'm not telling you things, these things right now, what else can I do? I can sit around and not share the light of God, the Word of God with people around me. I don't do much, <clears throat> but I do sit in my home. And I just pray and ask God, Jesus, to give me the opportunity to speak to people more about who Jesus Christ is as living God, Savior, and Creator alone. And yes, He is the light of this world right now. No one else can do what He did. <clears throat> no one else can ever be God, themselves in the flesh. No one else can die on the cross for all of the world's sins and say, there, it's done. You can be saved, you can be saved for heaven for eternity now. No one can do that. Only Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who was God himself in the flesh, who died on the cross for our sins, all sins, and was risen from the dead on the third day. And his Father God, Jehovah, was watching from above in heaven. Jesus Christ, our God and Savior, since he was born, knew who he was, <clears throat> even as a baby. They talked back and forth in the holiness of who they all are. The Holy Spirit was with God, Jesus, to help him inform his heart and mind to think like a person down here while he was an infant while he was a toddler while he was a young man while he was a teenager and then a young adult and yes he did die on that cross for the world's sins and he knew exactly from the time he was here <clears throat> as a small child who his father was his heavenly father god jehovah was not his creator but his heavenly father god jehovah he was his heavenly father god to worship to absolutely be outstanding for down here on this world at that moment in time because he had to be he had to be outstandingly perfect to be in this world as a man around all sin imagine that put in your only son who has been perfect throughout infinity with his heavenly father god jehovah and then god jehovah says i need you my son to go down here on this world and be their gift from the heart of God Jehovah and you, my son, to give them life eternal in heaven. Otherwise, we will lose all of our children. 
Would you not want to do something for all of your children also if you had the opportunity and the know-how how to do it? Well, they did. And that's exactly what happened. Jesus Christ God came down here as a small child. He was birthed into this world by his mother Mary. And yes, it's all true. It's all in the Bible. I'm not making this up. He was infinite God before he became man of flesh and God in spirit on this world. He is still man of flesh and God in spirit, home in heaven. And he has always been in the image of man. But at the same time, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, it doesn't teach us that he was in the image of man. But in the New Testament, now it does. So remember, when I'm teaching these things, it's from the Old Testament, which is very important from the rebirth of our opportunity at that moment in time to hear about the possibility of eternal life in heaven with our God, Jehovah at that moment in time is who they knew as God alone up until the New Testament was birthed into this world. Jesus Christ, our God and Savior. He is the New Testimony and the New Testament that gives us the glory, that gives us the glory of God, of who he, he of who He is and was when He was here as a man in the flesh, but God in spirit. God Himself in the flesh. No one can understand how this capability was done by Him. But the simple fact is this. In the Bible, it says, with God, Jesus, all things are possible. Matthew 19, 26. I'm not here to share the possibilities. I'm here to say it's done. It's finished. No one else can do what he did. No one else can ever say who they are as a man of God or God himself in the flesh that's alone with God so much that they are taking care of things even better than Jesus Christ, the son of God, did when he was here who died on the cross for the world's sins. And his name was Jesus Christ, God, our Savior, our Redeemer, our only living God, Savior, and Creator alone. No one else can do what he did. Jesus Christ, our God and Savior alone, can have only done it by himself. Pure living God, pure holy living God, sin-free, says that in the Bible too. He was incapable of sin, says that in the Bible too. You have got to sit down. And remember who mankind is. We are all sinners. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's in the Bible too. Remember, we have to know what God's worth is in this world to us. Pure living God alone, infinitely. And then, He is our living God alone who created us. All heaven and all earth and everything in them and around them. I want people to know, first of all, Jesus Christ is living God, Savior, and Creator alone to me in my life. But I worship Him daily as living God alone. God, Creator alone, and Savior and Redeemer in my life after I know Him, first of all, as infinite God. Then He becomes my known God, the only true living God, Jesus Christ, our God and Savior, with God Jehovah and God, the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, as one living God, all alone infinitely, and then the only true living God, deity alone for us eternally. That's after he created mankind. We cannot be with God infinitely, but we can be with him eternally from the, from the time he committed himself on this world, died on the cross for our sin, and was risen from the dead on the third day. At that moment in time, once he released the spirit of the holiness of who he was to our God Jehovah in heaven, and the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit was there with God, Jehovah, waiting to be aware of what was going on down here. And he knew, but at that moment in time, the problem was this. When God, Jesus, was on that cross, God had to turn away from him because he was filled with the sin of man. And that right there is the recognition of who we all are right now, full of sin. Sinful player, sinful winner, simple, it doesn't matter, simple, we are a sin, we are a sinner, simply a sinner. So it doesn't matter who we think we are, whether we are a player of anything down here in this world, very, 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 very successful and very, very nice, quote unquote, that we think we are, we are a sinner. For all have sinned to fall short of the glory of God. So don't mark yourself on that list. All of us are sinners. Therefore, each and every one of us is incapable of being in a godlike manner, godlike speech, godlike thinking. He's too fast. He's, he's too vast. He's too huge. He's God. He's infinite God. So what do I have to say to my God that will improve his situation? Nothing. 
Neither can you. No one can. No one can improve who God is. He's God, infinite God. He created me. What do I have to offer to our infinite God? Nothing. But I do say this. I praise you, God, Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins, that I have eternal life in heaven. And I pray for every, everyone around me, in my family and friends, and everyone on this planet every single day, that they will have been offered to them the goodness and will to choose in their heart the mind and way of thinking that God wants you to think about who he is and know in your will to choose him to worship. Because you see, God gave us a will to choose who he is as infinite God alone, and then our God alone, our creator and our savior. If you don't know these things as fact, you'd better start getting busy and get into the Bible and start reading the Bible from the beginning, the Old Testament to the New Testament and through them. You have to know that the end time is now upon us. We have had the first pandemic here in America, period. I don't care what the worst history was from long ago. What is now is now. The pandemic is horrifically awful, awful, and not only is it in America, it's around the world. That's a first for anyone to say that they can say that there's something else that was already happening a long time ago. God says it's the first. I believe him over mankind's wisdom and knowledge because we're limited. Our wisdom is nothing compared to God's. But our panic state situation right now on this earth is not good. But we are coming together more and more to pray to our Heavenly Father God, Jesus alone, to help us to get through this whole situation. So blacks and whites and browns, the, color, the colors of our skin on this world right now, the color of Jesus' skin is brown and was brown when he was here, hasn't changed. We are not here to be in a white congregation or a black congregation congregation or a brown congregation. God said, you are my children. I created you. I want you home with me in heaven. Be with me now in your life and in your heart. Let me sing into your will that Jesus Christ is God, almighty God, Jesus and Savior alone, creator of all mankind on earth and all the things in it and also in heaven and around heaven and earth. God, Jesus can do these things because with him, all things are possible. If you don't know better in your life with your will that you have been given and gifted to by God, Jesus, to choose to worship him as God, a living God, first of all, knowing him and believing him and considering him and revering him and trusting him as living God alone, Jehovah, then remember this. If you don't believe in God, you cannot believe that Jesus Christ exists as God or God the Holy Spirit with him as three in the presence as one living God, Savior, and Creator alone, but first infinite God. So I'm telling you this. If you deny God, you're denying all of them. You deny his Son. You deny the Father. It says this in the Bible. If you deny my Son, I will therefore have never known you, which means he denies you. Because you don't have that trust and faith in your heart and in your mind to believe Jesus Christ is God with God Jehovah, or you don't believe in God at all. You're eliminating the Holy Spirit either way. If you don't believe in God, you're eliminating Jesus Christ as God and the Holy Spirit as God. If you believe only in God Jehovah and Jesus Christ as God, but you don't understand about the Holy Spirit and deny, and deny him as God, saying he's not, you can be trusted to know that you can be saved not knowing him as God, but... Can you be trusted in knowing that and saying it to yourself? Or do you need to trust in God Almighty saying to you in your heart through the Holy Spirit of who they all are, who is God with us now, the Holy Spirit, God with us now, to tell you and comfort you and say, don't worry, I've got you. You're saved. How can that happen? Easily. Listen to your heart more often. Ask God to give you words more loud, clear, precise, and imprinted in your heart from him alone through the Holy Spirit, who is God with us all now. That can confirm many, many opportunities and things going on in your life right now. Spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, as well as, as, well as financially, it can be the possibility. With God, all things are possible. Yes, I can hear God's words. Do I trust they are God's words? Yes, how do I know this? How can I be so sure? I pray and ask everything in Jesus Christ, God's name alone. And in the Bible, it says when you pray and ask in his name for a loaf of bread, he's not going to throw you a rock. That's in the Bible. 
with many other scriptures telling you who he is as God, a trusting, living, hopeful God in your life. He can give you hope, love, forgiveness, and heavenliness in your heart and your mind and give you that choice in your will to say, yes, I know God exists. He does exist. He is the only true living God alone. And then our God, Savior, and Creator all alone. That is God Jehovah. God, Jesus, and God, the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit. Don't be so much in yourself that you are conformed to this world. That's what that scripture means. I'm telling you this in Romans 12, 2. Be ye not conformed to this world, which eliminates everything that God, Jesus, our God and Savior, wants to give you in hope and love and trust and healing in all areas of your life and the peace. The peace of God will give you thanksgiving and glory glorious hope, glorious love, and absolute forgiveness for your sins and also forgiveness for others, people who has been perhaps in your life and not been nice to you and they've sinned against you somehow, some way. The anger goes away more. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That means once you have accepted Jesus Christ as your living God, Savior, and Creator alone, you can be with Him so much more often by giving Him thanksgiving, giving, worshiping Him as living God alone, saying, thank you, God Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. Now I have eternal life in heaven with you. Please write my name in that book of eternal life. I want my name to come up when you read it one last time before you come down here on your return to pick us all up and take us home forever. So that you and be ye not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may know what is good, which is the acceptance of Jesus Christ in your life alone, which is acceptable, which is accepting everything in your life to be worth worthy and worthwhile with God Jesus in the presence of who He is. Change your life, change your mind, change your mouth. Stop taking His name in vain, outwardly, inwardly. Ask God Jesus to help you to slow down, not be so impatient, not to have an outburst of impatience or anger that would hurt someone else around you. And then you become in a, in a depressed state or out of your mind to say, oh no, I've done this again. And just, you're just not yourself anymore with God Jesus. He wants you with Him. So know what is good and acceptable in being in the presence of who he is as living God alone so he can eliminate those things from your, from your life and help you to become a better you and perfect will. Know his perfect will. Can you believe that? To know perfect will of God? That's a, that, that's, that's a miracle to me, to imagine that, to know the perfect will of God. But you can. With God, all things are possible. You can be non-conformed to this world and trans transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may know what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God, which is the imagining of who he is as living God, infinite God deity, all alone, and Jesus Christ, our God and Savior, who was man himself in the flesh, who did die on the cross for the world's sins and was risen from the dead on the third day. He can help you like he, like he has helped me and so many on this world. I'm not just saying this just to be saying it and spouting about who I am and how wonderful I am or how awful I have been, but I have been awful. And that wonderful part, I'm working on that daily with God Jesus helping me to be a better me. Whether it's wonderful or not, I don't know. I don't care. I know this. When I put a smile on someone's face around me, whether I know them or not, as family, friends, or someone that's a stranger, Praise God, Jesus. That's an acceptance to me. And the perfect will of God is getting people to smile more, knowing Jesus Christ is living God's Savior and Creator alone. And we can help them to do that too, if they are willing to choose with their own will God gave them to say, yes, I choose you, God, with my will to worship you as living God, Creator alone, and your name is Jesus. Now remember this. Jesus Christ is the Son of whomever God, Jehovah, chooses him to be, which was himself. God Jehovah, who is living God with God Jesus and God the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit. Now they have they have never been created, but God Jehovah gave me that line for a reason because he wants to see in the awareness about who I am that I know who he is always. He is holy, living God, infinite God, deity alone. So he chose the name of his son Jesus to give to the people down here to live on this world and to know that the only father who is God Jehovah in heaven, would know 
into, well, Jesus Christ would know who his heavenly father was, even though he was down here. His father down here was chosen by God, by infinite God, Jehovah. So that other part that I was talking about also knows that Jesus Christ and God are infinite God in oneness of who they are all are together. So God didn't choose that for God, uh, Jesus. It was already happening. But in the infin infinite God position that he was when he was down here, he wanted Jesus, God, to know him more as his heavenly father down here because of the sin roaming around. Now, Jesus Christ is incapable of sin. I know this, but things happen. So Jesus, God, God, Jehovah said, listen, I'm going to be with you even more to make sure that we get through this all together. And they did because being infinite God alone, they can do anything and everything. So remember, infinite God first, holy, pure, living God, incapable of sin. And God, Jehovah knew his son, Jesus, who was God with him, could do this whole thing down here. And he did because he was God himself in the flesh. And I know this is a lot of things to hang on to and listen to. Just remember the remembrance about who he is as living God alone knowing who he was as God himself in the flesh. And his name is Jesus. Pray and ask everything in Jesus Christ, God's name alone when you make a prayer. And remember, the Son of God is Jesus Christ, our God and Savior, with God Jehovah and God, the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, as one living God alone infinitely. And remember, all of the things that I talk about all equal one living God alone in the presence of three. One in the presence, three in the presence of one. I'm sorry. Three in the presence as one living God alone. That's God Jehovah, God Jesus, and God the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit. You have a wonderful day. God bless.